Hey, Larkin Rose here, and I have a really stupid idea that I want to share with you. No, I mean it. It's stupid, it's immoral, it's counterproductive, it wouldn't do any good. But, bear with me. Here's my stupid idea. You know how millions of people use heating oil to heat their homes. And millions of other people use natural gas to heat their homes. And some other people use other methods. Well, I think we should have a national election. Have everybody vote either for heating oil or for natural gas. Now, if the people who vote for heating oil win the vote, uh, everybody in the country should be forced to use heating oil to heat their homes, and we'll have to outlaw natural gas. On the other hand, if the, the people who vote for natural gas wins, that's what everybody will have to have, and will ban heating oil. And then, to make things nice and simple, we'll have one monopoly that will supply the oil or the gas, whichever, to everybody in the country. And anybody who doesn't pay, because you have to go along with the program, after all, it was democratically chosen and legislated. That's the plan. So anybody who doesn't go along with it will face fines and imprisonment, of course. And for those of you who uh, heat your house now with a stove, a wood-burning stove, or a fireplace, well, you're out of luck. Those aren't one of the two choices. Um, you, have to, you have to abide by the will of the majority, because that's what democracy is all about. Now, after we implement this stupid idea, of course there will be malcontents and scofflaws who don't want it, who say, well, I, I wanted to do it the other way, or I, I want to use a wood-burning stove or, or something. But who cares about them? They will do as they're told or be punished. After all, after we force them to pay for whatever we as a people vote that they should have, we're going to give them the service, the oil, gas, whichever it's chosen. So it's just paying for services. So what basis could they possibly have to complain about the situation? If my stupid idea is implemented and becomes the law, hey, if you don't like it, this is the law, this is democracy. If you don't like it, you can just get out of the country. Because, of course, if everybody can choose for themselves how to heat their own house, there would be anarchy and chaos, and, and people would freeze to death and boil to death, and oh, it would be so, so out of control. Now, of course, there will be a couple other uh, effects of, of implementing my really stupid idea. Um, for example, prices will skyrocket, whether gas wins or oil wins. There won't be any competition anymore. There's going to be one monopoly. It can charge whatever it wants because it doesn't have to outdo anybody else. Uh, for the same reason, the quality of service will pretty much plummet, if not completely disappear. Because you're forced to pay for it whether you want it or not, so they don't have to please their customers. If you don't like it, pfft, tough luck. You have to pay or you go to jail. And there would need to be a bunch of added rules and regulations. Uh, for example, we'd have to ban things like space heaters, uh, maybe even candles, anything you could use to heat your house in a way that doesn't conform with the democratically chosen legal form of heating your house. We'd have to ban all those and, of course, have punishments for that. And there'd be other rules like we have to have a department of temperature control of your house because if you can just turn down your thermostat to where the heating, whether it's oil or gas, doesn't turn on, well, that's just a sneaky way to get out of, of paying your fair share for the, the, the program that the people have chosen for the nation. So, of course, you're not allowed to do that. We have to have a department that, that can monitor and control everybody's um, temperature in their homes. So, how do you like my stupid idea so far? Before you answer, I want to describe another stupid idea. Or rather, the same stupid idea, but applied to a different context. Consider giving to the poor. Now, you could choose what charity to give to and choose how much you can afford to give and how much you want to give and which sort of things you want to support, but my idea is we should vote for an establishment that will force everybody to give their money to whatever the people in charge of the program decide. It will be called government welfare. And if you don't hand over your money for them to give away the way they see fit, you get to be put in a cage, or you get your house stolen, or, or something like that. Now, we'll be nice in this case, 
will also let you give to private charities if you happen to have anything left over after you're forced to pay for the government version of this. Uh, let's apply the same stupid idea to retirement. Um, let's have one centralized thing that an elected body creates and forces you to participate in for your retirement, and we'll call it Social Security. And you'll have to pay into it, even if you think you could do it far better on your own, even if you'd rather do a different style of retirement, a different kind, invest in different things, if you don't trust the people running it, doesn't matter. Now, you will be allowed to do a private retirement if you have any money left over after they force you to pay for the national centralized government controlled mandatory version of the plan. And let's apply the same stupid idea to education. You will be forced to pay for a school not because you chose it, not because you think it's good, not because it's where you want your kids to go, but because the people elected a gang called government who will decide what education system we're all going to have. And hey, if you don't like it, you can leave the country. If you happen to have any money left over after paying for that, well, you can pay to have your kids go somewhere else, but you must pay for the government version, uh, the government solution to the situation. Uh, we can apply this stupid idea to all sorts of things. Let's have a big election where we decide which of the following is going to be uh, the allowable drug of choice, alcohol or marijuana. And when the government decides you're allowed to have alcohol, you're not allowed to have marijuana, if you happen to choose the wrong one, you might get dragged away and put in a cage for years and years and years. Because, hey, if you could choose for yourself whether to have a beer or smoke a joint, it would be chaos and anarchy. So we have to have a giant, violently imposed state solution. And hey, it's the law and it's democratically chosen, so if you don't like it, get out of the country. The post office. The government says, we'll deliver the mail and we'll lock up people who compete with them. Yes, it's actually a crime to deliver little pieces of paper to other people. If you're not the post office, they will lock you up. Ask Lysander Spooner about that. FDA. If you don't trust the government version of people looking into things to make sure products are safe, because the government version constantly gets caught being corrupt, lying thieves, if you would like to rely on some other company, too bad you have to pay for their version, and you are not allowed to consume things not approved by their version. Um, protection. Local police. Now, maybe you think, I'd rather have somebody I know and trust who patrols our neighborhood and keeps an eye out, who's on call, who I can call to, to come running if there's any trouble. Uh, nope, you don't get to. You have to pay for the government version of police. They get voted into office and then they create one system for everybody in your neighborhood, or everybody in the country if you're talking about the federal level, and if you don't pay for it, they put you in a cage. If you don't like it, if you think that it's abusive, counterproductive, doing nasty things, if you think it's committing more crime than it prevents, which it does, uh, too bad. You pay up or you get punished. National defense, same thing. We elect people and they make you pay for what they say is protecting the country. Now, if you get sort of upset when you find out that, well, they're blowing up thousands of people on the other side of the world who don't have anything to do with you, and who are just civilians living their own life in their own country, if you don't like that, too bad you're going to pay for it or you're going to be put in a cage. Because this is the stupid idea called government. Yes, all government is a stupid idea. Because all of what it ever is, is let's all get together and vote for somebody who will come up with a central plan that they're going to force on all of us under threat of taking our money or putting us in a cage if we don't pay for their version of services that society supposedly needs. Now, in the case of gas versus oil, I bet you immediately recognize that the idea is patently stupid. That the notion that we have to all vote and then force one decision on everybody is pointless. It's also immoral to force people to buy a service they don't want. Let them choose what they want. Let them choose what they want to buy. It makes everything cheaper, it makes everything more efficient, and it's not horribly immoral unlike forcing all your neighbors to buy whatever form of home heating you want. Or, in any other context, forcing your neighbor to pay for any solution that you want to a problem that they think isn't the best idea. They would rather do it this way. 
but democracy is all about let's all get together, vote in one giant centralized, forcibly imposed solution to a given problem, and lock up all the people who say, wait, I don't like this solution, I think there's a better one. And the fact that this really stupid idea has been around for a very long time, covering most of the world, and the fact that it's called legal and democratic doesn't make it any less stupid. If you have a hundred people, if you have a million people, if you have a billion people, and they get together and say, how about instead of interacting voluntarily, how about instead of each of us making our own choices and running our own lives the best we can, how about we all vote for one person to force us all to do the same thing? It's stupid, it's destructive, and it's immoral. And the fact that it's what you've always seen as society and the country doesn't make it any less stupid. So, if you're against my stupid idea of having everybody vote, are we all going to use gas or are we all going to use oil, then think things through and you will realize for the exact same reasons everything that government does is completely stupid and immoral. If you really want to understand how and why we've all been duped into advocating such stupid ideas when it comes to how society should be arranged and how things should function, read The Most Dangerous Superstition. It will change the way you see the world.